Hey guys, what's up? This is Nate here, and this is going to be a part 2 video to the iTunes Match demo that I uploaded yesterday. So in the previous one, I showed more of an installation of iTunes Match as, briefly showing, as well as briefly showing how it worked on my iPhone. In this video, I'm going to get, be going a bit more in depth now that I've had some time to work with it, so you can get a better understanding of the future. So once you've enabled iTunes Match, you're going to get a little iCloud symbol next to your music collection. This signifies that all your songs are available to both stream and download from the cloud. You'll notice that some of my songs here have this little download arrow next to them. This signifies that this song is not currently stored on my computer, and I can just stream it from the cloud if I want to, or I can download the song to my computer by pressing this button, and you'll see it has begun downloading. Um, what also will happen is, let's say I have some, well, my Beatles music and my Billy Joel music here, I have imported from a CD. Let's say I don't want those songs to be taking up space on my computer anymore, I can simply select it, and to remove it from my iTunes library, and you'll see the little arrow here showing that I can now stream it or download it if I want to. So that's a really nice feature. So how does this iTunes Match service actually work? The first thing it's going to do is take a look at all the songs that you've purchased from iTunes, recognize them, and then make them available in the cloud. The second thing it will do is take a look at all the songs that you've either imported from a CD or possibly downloaded from the internet. It's going to try to match those songs with songs that are currently available to purchase in the iTunes store. So with my Beatles music here, um, it matched that with the current Beatles album that you can purchase in the iTunes store at this point. So this did two things for me. The first thing is it upgraded the song to a higher quality to match what you can buy in the iTunes store uh, currently, and it also gave me some nice album artwork. So that's really nice, in addition to having the stream and download feature with iCloud. The third thing it might have to do is, let's say I have some songs that aren't available in the iTunes store. When it goes to analyze and match those songs, it won't be able to uh, match them with anything that you can buy in iTunes. So we'll have to upload those songs to the cloud manually. But this is going to be a huge time saver over service such, such as the Amazon Cloud Player, because you're not going to have to go through a lengthy upload time to get all your music collection available to you in iTunes. Now, I did want to mention that there is a 25,000 song limit with the iTunes Match service, but it's a pretty good deal because you're paying $24.99 for a 12 month subscription, so in reality you're paying about a dollar per a thousand songs. Next I wanted to talk about updating your iCloud library. So let's say I imported some more music from CDs and I want those songs to be available to me on iCloud. All I have to do is head up here to store and update iTunes match and it will begin gathering the information about my iTunes library in order to update it. Next let's take a look at my iPhone. So as I showed you yesterday, all these features are available on the iDevices as well. So you can both stream and download music, and you can also download entire albums, which is pretty cool. You'll also notice that the music tab here is missing. The reason for that is it will be taken away automatically when you enable the feature, because there's no need for it anymore. All your music will be an, an, uh, managed by the iTunes Match service. So this really makes my iPhone even more of a PC-free device, because I don't have to worry about backing anything up um, like my music anymore, and with my photos I plan on using PhotoStream, and with apps and movies and text messages and other things like that, I'm going to use the storage and backup feature with iCloud. So who is this service really for? Well, it's either for someone who possibly has a lot of music that's taking up space on their iDevice and they want more storage for apps and movies and other things like that. They can sign up for this service and just stream all their music to free up some space. Also, let's say someone has a lot of music from CDs that they or songs that they possibly downloaded and imported into iTunes. They can sign up for this feature to get uh, better quality music. Also, what's nice about this is you no longer have to worry about um, backing up your music if you needed to um, reinstall the operating system. So if I needed to install OS Lion over again for whatever reason, I won't have to worry about backing up my music anymore because it's all saved in the cloud. Also, it makes sharing your music much easier. So if I went over to a friend's house, all I would have to do is sign in on my account on either his iDevice or the iTunes application, and we could listen to my music without actually having to have me save it to a thumb drive or something like that and then port it to his computer. So it does really provide a lot of convenience. So if you guys have any more questions, please leave them below and I'd be glad to answer them for you. Please like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.